podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss talk. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? None, none of you know my day will walk on. Y'all, definitely, please go ahead and subscribe, follow, check out all our other videos that we already posted. Thank you in advance. Man, hold up. I ain't even see that coming. Y'all mm-hmm. definitely need to like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, uh, woo, woo, woo. Why are you just going to throw that in there like that with me? That's what we're supposed Off to be doing. Off the jump. That's what we're supposed check to Check it, do. man. We got a beautiful beautiful young lady in here today y'all she don't need no introduction you seen on here before we whopped it out in this whole <laughs> we, yeah we did our thing man c4s is in the building once again man gg chanel is in the building gg <laughs> chanel what's going hey. on man how you doing i'm good good man we got to figure out you know back in the day i'm an old nigga when you when you when you're old, you think about the way you get in. Four one one was the way you get information back in the day. Y'all don't remember that nigga? Like, what's the four one one? That's a whole song. Nigga don't realize. Four one one means information. Did y'all know that? I knew that for real. And did. How would y'all know that? Because y'all don't, don't use the four one one no more. I don't know. Like, you know I what's do, the four one one? What's the four one one like? They used to say that back in the day. That's hard. You see what I'm saying? Okay. The four one one. So. Let's go. See, I don't, mean, don't underestimate the look. She's not as young as she look. Period. Man, that girl about 10. Hey, yo, let's go, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, I like to take it back. I want to get to know you as a person, Gigi, before you were Gigi. Or were you always Gigi? No, I wasn't always Gigi. Like, I was Gigi to my family, but, like, in school and everything, everybody called me by my little government name. Oh, okay. But now I don't like the government So you didn't have a nickname back then? Not really, no. Not really? It was just my government. So you <laughs> said you were born and raised in Chicago? Yeah, I was born and raised in Chicago. What uh, part? West side? I'm really not sure. South side? I was born in Harvey, though, but... Naperville. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were too young when you left. How old were you when you left? I was around, like, maybe, like, 11. You, I wasn't that young. Yeah, but, like, the way... You don't remember none? The way I grew up, I don't know. It's like, I really don't remember a lot of my childhood because it was so... Everything was changing. I moved a lot. So it's like, it's here and there. Why, were y'all in the military? Mm-mm. So why y'all moved around a lot? Well, we originally left, like, different cities in Chicago because of the crime rate. Mm-hmm. And my mom had six kids. So, like, she was quick to Are get you the youngest? Her. I'm the second youngest. The second youngest. Mm-hmm. Boys and girls? All girls. Wow. Girl with all girls. I think that's why I don't get along with females now, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I grew up with five sisters, and then I just recently found out that my dad had, like, four other kids, all girls. Was so. your dad living with your mom at a time? Here and there. Here yeah, and they there. was on and off. Eventually, like, they weren't together anymore. That's really why we left um, Chicago to Florida. But he ended up passing, like, a couple years after we moved to Florida, so. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. All right. But did, was he in your life a lot? Yeah, when I was a kid, yeah. I have a lot of good memories with my dad more than the bad. Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, for sure. So you were you always into music as a kid growing up? Where did you get that from? No, honestly, the music really came when I met Oh Boy. Really? Oh Boy Prince, yeah. I really did not even think about being an artist at all. I was really big on dancing. Just dancing. And tumbling and stuff, cheerleading. That was really me. So you were always so, a cheerleader from a kid growing up? I wouldn't say I was a cheerleader, but, like, I like dancing and flipping around and stuff. Mm-hmm. I never, like, took any type of dance classes, though, because my mom didn't have the money. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't want to, like, give up on my passion. So that's why I kept going. And I just, I know, I guess it's in me. Don't they have, don't they have dance in school? So, in, like, in high school, you couldn't, like, join? Yeah, but the high school I went to, like, I don't know. The dance team that they had was really a flag team. And okay. then I started, I tried to start my own dance team and they wouldn't let me. So I was like, <laughs> you know what? It's cool. I didn't like the school anyway. But yeah, I really didn't do a lot in high school because of the school. And in high school, you were in Florida mm-hmm. for high school. Yeah, Florida. How was Florida compared to Chicago? Man, it's so different. Like, it's a complete culture change. You like, like Florida better than Chicago? Nope. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I guess, like, the weather and stuff. And, it's like, way better weather-wise. Yeah, that's probably the only thing it got. But, like, 
And Ooh, crime rates, mm-mm. crime rate is better in um, <coughs> in in Florida than it is in Chicago. Definitely, yeah. But I was like, like I said, I was young, so like I don't really like remember too much of the crime mm-hmm. and stuff. But definitely, when I changed paths, it was like even from the friends I had to make, it was mm-hmm. like I had to talk different, I had to address them different. Everything was just different, and mm-hmm. me being so young, I guess it was easy for me to just you know adjust. Mm-hmm. So that's really I don't know. So were your siblings with you when Mm -hmm. they moved? Yeah, all except the oldest, my mom's oldest. She stayed Stayed in Chicago Chicago. because she was a senior in high school. Okay. So, yeah, she stayed, but everybody else, we went to Florida. (laughs) Okay. So um, what's the craziest thing you saw in high school in in Florida? Craziest thing? Mm -hmm. Probably when um, we was all on the elevator one day and... This little kid yelled at me and my friends talking about he was sorry for slavery and called uh, us a uh, bunch of niggers. Yeah, I went to a very racist no. school. No. It happened, I swear to God, put it on my life. And like little white kid. Now, wait a minute. Now let me get in there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of racism going on there. Yeah, man. Say. So what what did they I, I wanna recap that day. Mm-hmm. Like what? Happened. Okay. You were in there. What floor was y'all on? When you <laughs> it was only two floors. We was on it the was second floor going floors. down. You was on the second floor. Mm-hmm. Was this a white girl or white boy? It was a boy. And how old was this guy at the time? He was actually in my grade, so he was a sophomore. He was a so sophomore how many kids was on? School. How many kids was on the elevator at that time? It was me, my sister, my friend on crutches, and then the white kid and his friend. So how many friends did he have? Just one friend Just with him. Just the one friend with him. And one he felt friend. brave saying that he was all y'all. Two boys against three girls. Mm-hmm. And he took it upon himself. Now, what did he say again? He said he was sorry for slavery. He don't, he like Kanye, he don't, he kind of have an issue with the slavery. And, and he like, called you the N-word. Yeah, a bunch what, of niggers. What, a bunch of Negroes or niggers. Mm-hmm. How did he, niggers? Or what niggers, did he, that's what ooh, he said. with the E-R. The E-R, child. And what did you feel when that was said? Honestly, the first thing I wanted to do was just like cuss him out. But like, I was so used to like all the racist stuff happening. It's like I froze. And you know, like when people just push you off your limit and you like, you don't know when you're going to snap. And that was the moment that I snapped. So I froze initially. But then and you snapped I afterwards. I snapped. What so happened? What did you I started, do? I started calling him all types of stuff, talking about everything, telling him like. And what did he say? So were you the first person to go nothing. off? Or because uh, you had two other friends with mm-hmm. you, but you were the first person to say something? No, nah, my sister was. Your sister hard, <laughs> what did your sister you? say? I don't even remember exactly what she said, but I remember that she was the one who initially started the, you know, comeback. Okay. So. Let, let me just let me first of all apologize for him because mm-hmm. everybody's not like that. Right. You know what I mean? So I mean, just because you got some ignorant people that don't understand that everybody is made and we're all made in God's image. Mm-hmm. White, black, green, blue, or brown. So exactly. at the end of the day, we, we won't let one person spoil it and he probably was raised in, a, in that environment. Exactly. So yeah. That's why I, I didn't feel want to sorry blame him. for him, you yeah. know what I mean? More than anything. But just for you to be able to be here today and look at how beautiful you are. When you look in the mirror, you smile, you got your braces, you <laughs> run around this thing, you kicking it, you you ain't you know, you ain't big bone and then you got your nice physique, you know what I'm saying? I'm a little thick, I'm a little thick. <laughs> you slim thick? It is. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you dancing, I mean, when did you first, when you was a cheerleader? Yeah, but I was like already dancing and stuff before I actually cheered. I didn't cheer till high they school. They used to put you on the top and hold you of up. Because you the little one. Mm-hmm. Bump yep. you up. Throw me all over the did place. Did y'all say ready okay when y'all started? Ready? Ready? Okay. <laughs> See, I told you people say that. I try to tell my my daughter's friend that, mm-hmm. and she said, we don't say that. And I said, this is what it the depends on the school. Say. Some school. But what did y'all say? Give it to me one more time. What did y'all Ready? say? Ready? Okay. See? But, uh, but, but, no, but, I knew I was right. But your school Damn. was predominantly white. Exactly. So, yeah, because their cheers is going to be different. Because when I go to, like, the football games, you see, you know, the hood schools from mm-hmm. the, the type of dances that they be exactly. doing. And I'm like, man. Them the cool ones. Exactly. And I always <laughs> wish. I just wanted to change high school so bad for that one reason. Mm-hmm. Man, say, I hated my cheer team. Because they'd be <laughs> lit. They'd be so lit. Mm-hmm. What was, what's the hardest dance that you've ever had to learn, like, how to do it? And it was like, damn, can't get it. Damn, can't get it. 
Not even on no cocky stuff. I don't think I ever had a moment like that. Just really? because, like, I never really actually been in a dance class. I would, like, watch tutorials on YouTube and stuff, and I'll struggle with those a little bit, but at the end of the day, I'll get them. But, like, I never really had that real dance experience. So, like, me being on the cheer team and stuff, I was always looked at as, like, the best because I was flexible and had a dance background. But I wouldn't really say, like, I was the best. It's so you can just, do the like, backflips and everything. Yeah. What? Sure can. Damn. Who, mm-hmm. who, who, and, um, who do you look up to dance wise, like coming up and be like, she hard, that's who I want to dance like, or that's who I want to dance better like? Because um, I'm only thinking about one person. I'm trying to think if you're going to say that person. Probably not. Because, like, I'm big on like choreographers. Like, okay. those are probably my favorite dancers. And my favorite one is actually Will the Beast Adams. I don't know if y'all ever heard of him. Mm. He really know be in exactly the who you're talking about. Yeah. He dope. He hard, exactly. bro. And I used to stay watching his YouTube videos back to back. I learned every dance, and I just wanted to take his class so fucking bad. Yeah. So bad. So why don't you? I just never had the opportunity, and then, like, I kind of lost my passion growing up. Cause, mm-hmm. like, why did you know. lose your passion for dancing? I just felt like I wasn't getting nowhere because, like... How long did it take you? Like, before you started feeling that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I say, like, I started feeling that way in high school, especially around the time where I was trying to form a dance team. Mm -hmm. And it's like, in my high school, there was nothing for dancing. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. So, I like, that's the only option I had because, like I said, we didn't have the money for dance classes or for me to travel or nothing. So, it's like, probably in high school is when I started losing my passion. But even after high school, like, I still did, like, talent shows from here to there just locally Mm -hmm. so like i would still like to do it but i just felt myself giving up more and more every year on it and i just i hated it but at the end of the day i really can't say why it happened i just know it probably was because i wasn't doing what i wanted to do so what made you have that turnaround to (laughs) to to gain that passion for it again probably social media because i started posting on youtube and stuff and i started gaining followers on instagram and then back in the day it was musically now it's tiktok Mm -hmm. but that's really why i blew up first musically and like once i seen that people all over the world react a certain way just to me dancing they Mm -hmm. never even met me and they just love me because i can dance right it's a different type of vibe when you got that support from people all over the world that you don't even know Mm -hmm. i just I wanted to keep going for them. I, don't know. I love it. Who's the big, like, like somebody that jumped in your uh, comments or DM and he was like, damn, I wouldn't have even thought I'd ever talk to or this person would have seen me. Hmm. I really, it probably hasn't have, have, happened. Have yet. anybody made done your dance or done you guys' dance? I think I've seen somebody doing y'all dance, and these was not just no normalized people. These were some heavy hitters so yeah to speak. we had a couple you know big stars dancing to our stuff like nine times out of ten i'm probably not gonna know who they is by their name just because i'm a face person and like i don't know it's hard for me to remember names but i see so, I, I i i i got one to come to mind but i'm gonna say the wrong person but i know i see <laughs> yeah it's definitely been a, a couple it's of been them. a few and and that, that that you should be proud of that to even be a part of the c4s thing how did you know that this was the group that you was for you what what made you say this is where i want to be this is my my group and i'm so proud to be a part of it Probably because, like, I never had to be shy around them. Like, I'm a very shy person. I'm not going to talk unless I'm spoken to. And it's not even because I'm rude. That's just how I am. Like, I'm antisocial, all that. And it's like, as soon as I met them, just, like, one by one individually, it's like I I could be myself around them. I never had to act or fake. And it was just so comfortable and so natural. And I never had that with anybody because I didn't link with so many influencers. And I just be ready to go home. I come to Dallas, I never want to go home. Wow. I always want to be around. I'll be crying when it's time to go. That's why I moved here, you feel me? Like, it's a different vibe with C4S. I don't even know how to explain it. You just feel it. That's good. I love mm-hmm. it. They wow. cool people. Cool as fuck. <laughs> wow. So where do you, you want to see yourself go with C4S? I definitely want to try to become better in the music industry because I am new to that mm-hmm. and I even hear like the difference from like my first when recorded first song started. to now mm-hmm. I hear the difference so I know it's in me I just got to keep working and practicing but I really do want to get better at music and build your confidence because to me I always say it's confidence is what hold a lot of people back yes you doubting yourself mm-hmm. That's and facts. thinking that you're not where you are when everybody else can see it in you but you can't see it in yourself yes I'm big on that like, and one thing ooh. I always tell people I always say it doesn't hurt to just do it. 
Mm-hmm. You don't ever want to look back on your life and be like, I wish I did put out more. I wish I did. I wish, I wish. You mm-hmm. can't go back to the past. Exactly. Why not just do it? Like, at least you try type shit. Exactly. Don't work out. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely. Man, Gigi Chanel, man. Just one of those people who we just happy to have you on Boss Talk 101. What a boss's <laughs> talk. You know, last time you was here, you were dancing and looking and talking and yeah I, I i seen you in the crowd I, I i gave you hell you know i have a way about dealing with everybody so you definitely did oh yeah did i mess with you a little bit <laughs> already did i dance with you a little bit uh, you did and you did really? i yeah got we down right dinner there. i handled it dinner and did yeah. yeah see i love all your reels how do your um audience react to because you're always doing a lot of reels with your girl yeah <laughs> so how does your audience react to that they love us i don't know like they always telling us like they want a relationship like us and we're so cute together and like they feel our energy through our videos and like to hear comments (coughs) like that it's just like you know you're doing something right yeah it's like mm -hmm. because i always see a lot the one that cracked me up the most is when you dressed her up as (laughs) a girl you had on the wig and (laughs) the dress that was so funny and i was reading all the comments and everything like that i'm like that was dope though i like Mm -hmm. that definitely we like to do different stuff like that how do you always come up with all these different content it's like you never put the same things out you always doing say, different people be in our dms like you should do this you should do that and we be like oh that's a good idea and we'll we'll do it okay. that's basically how it happened but sometimes we'll be thinking about it and we'll be like oh yeah that's hard like i knew me transforming her was gonna blow up and mm. it did how many views did it get on youtube it got about 60k but mm-hmm. that's a lot because we normally only get like 8 to 10k right now per mm-hmm. video so that one really blew on youtube and then it's almost on a mil- at a million on tiktok wow. and then it hit a million on facebook so it wow. really blew on every platform even instagram we got like 40,000 likes almost 600,000 views on instagram mm-hmm. and that's hard i feel like instagram is a hard platform to get really views is on. that the hardest one because mm-hmm. we just started our couple page and it only took us like two weeks to run it up to 20k Mm. Mm-hmm. Break you. No back. ads, no ads or anything like that. That's natural. Mm-hmm. Just running it up. Cause yep. you know a lot of people be doing all those ads and buying views and all of that. What yeah. do you think about that? I don't got time for that, baby. I barely got enough money to pay my bills. I'm not about to buy no followers. No, I'm not about to buy no views. Like <laughs> they'll come or they won't. <laughs> Break I your can't back. Do it. <laughs> Break your back. Let's talk about that. Good. When you, how did you feel? Like was that one of your early on ones with unique music? I think, yeah, I think that was our first one together. Yeah, and you jumped yeah. up and you gave your, but how did you feel about that? Like, this was one of your first, you know, mic checks or whatnot? Yeah, um, Throw That Shit was, but Break Your Back was like my first song that was my song. Because I yeah. was just a feature on Throw That Shit. Okay. So, I don't know, it's like, it was different because I'm not used to having all the attention on me, especially in music videos. So, it was definitely something different, but I enjoyed it. And then having Unique on the song... It's like it made it even better because like we already cool in person. Like that's my, you know, that's my bitch. So I don't know. It's just it was a good experience, I guess. Uh, it's definitely different, but I feel like it loosened me up a little bit. Who else would you want to work with? <sighs> Glorilla. <laughs> Glorilla. That yeah, that's be my spirit animal. I love her so much, and like I, I don't fan girl or nothing. Like that's not me. Mm-hmm. But I swear to God, if I meet her, bro, I'm probably lose my breath. <laughs> no, man, I love her so much. She just, it's her energy. I don't know. She's so natural with it. What's your favorite song that she has? Tomorrow. Really? Why? I like the version without Cardi B, but the version with Cardi B is dope too. But I don't yeah. know. It's just I think that's it's the crazy because people always say. I would think that you would like the version with Cardi B, mm-hmm. but you don't. You like the one it's without. It's because I already liked the song beforehand, I think. So it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. I love it with Cardi B, but mm-hmm. I just, like, I was already hooked on it before that. So, yeah, I don't know. That would be really dope. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well. Um, I know a lot of your fans, they'll be waiting for you to do the wig giveaways. <laughs> That is so oh crazy. Don't they be asking you all the time, like, when are you doing another one? When yes, are you doing another one? They blow me up, and it's like, I love doing it for them because you don't see nobody just giving away wigs. Right. I love doing it for them, but it's like the process, you got to have the time. And right is now, it a hard process? It's not hard, but like when you get so many entries, you got to make sure you stay on top of it because it'll be the day that I'm supposed to pick the winner, and I got 200 more entries to put into the raffle bucket. And it's like, 
trying to write all them names and stuff. And then some people buy one ticket. You got people who buy 80 tickets. I'm so. sure there's, I know people who do it and they have an app mm-hmm. that you can always, just, you don't have to manually write down names or anything like that. You can put them in the app. Yeah. And it automatically like spins and it picks a person. So you might want to look into that. Yeah, they had told me that on my last live stream. They was like, Gigi, See? why are you writing all these exactly. names? <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely probably going to do it like that. I'm trying to switch it around before I bring it back because I want it to be official. How many like, people entered the last time? The last time was one of my best time. I think I had five, like almost 600, like 580 wow. something. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Wow. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. <laughs> huh? Top, Top three, three artists. artists, dead or alive, any genre. Ooh. Number one. That's hard for me. I can't think fast. Let me think. Number one. I definitely think Michael Jackson got to be in there. Okay, number okay, two. Number two. <coughs> mm. I'm going to say Usher, honestly. He got some that hits. That boy bad. He got some hits. It's going to burn for me to say this. <laughs> <laughs> coming from my heart, heart <laughs> and number three it's been a long time coming stop mm, it number three <laughs> probably Nikki. Nikki Minaj. Minaj ooh that's a hard one there that girl go hard yeah. man, it's hard Steam to deal with up, that yeah. woman right there ooh, go get your best I'm gonna bring Nikki. it's going down <laughs> yeah she, she definitely kill up it. there she got her creds for sure she mm-hmm. works for that. So you said that's she why that was crazy when you said Glorilla. I thought you would have said Nikki that you wanted to work with. But Glorilla young and she just starting. I mean, come on now, she but popping. Even right then, now. I never really fan girl over Nikki though. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong, I love her too. But it's like I've I see something in Glorilla that I've never seen in the artist. Mm. Like honestly, she kind of inspired me a little bit because I was listening to her old music and she sound completely different. So I'm like, if she can do that, I know it's probably possible for me. So like, I, I it's like definitely that. an inspiration thing. I like wow. that. Shout out to Glorilla, man. You got to come on Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Period. <laughs> if you want to talk with the bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Tell uh, me a time in your for. life that you were faced with adversity. Something, you know, you know, we all go through things that sometimes you think that, man, how am I going to overcome from this point all onward? But you overcame it. Yeah. Tell me something that you overcame. Hmm, let me think. It's hard for me to think real fast, but <sighs> overcame something. Mm-hmm. Got hurt in a relationship? Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah, you want I the guess. person to get hurt oh. every week. Or let me go back to this. Yes, I'm hurt this week. <laughs> I'm hurt next week. Oh, my God. Yeah, in I'm the, definitely like, one that. Coming up in high school. <laughs> Did you always like girls? No. <laughs> no? So you dated yeah. boys before? Yeah, I had one boyfriend. That's had all it boyfriend. took. It only took one. Yeah, she ain't even 15. <laughs> How many boys? I'm just there? asking. I'm big grown over. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just land, but I had one boyfriend. And not to diss him or anything, but it wasn't for me. And I knew it wasn't for me. Not to go, like, too deep into detail, but, like, when you get to that stage and, like, what you gonna do? I didn't want to do it, so mm-hmm. it's like I already knew. And then it's like I played basketball, and the way I used to look at girls, I didn't understand it because mm-hmm. like I don't know. I was so sheltered as a kid. I feel like I was blind to some of the real world, so I didn't even know like a lot about being gay or anything. Mm-hmm. So I definitely didn't come out in high school, but I felt it in high school for sure. So when you had to tell your mom for the first time that you were gay, how did that go? It honestly, I didn't tell her. Like, I just popped out on Instagram with a girlfriend, and she was like, she felt some type of way because she wished I would have came to her and told her because she was like, I'm not going to judge you. At the end of the day, I still love you. You're still my baby. You love who you love. And I just, oh, my phone. Okay, it's okay. But yeah, she was like, you love who you love. And it's like, that felt really good coming from my mom because I didn't know how to tell anybody. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I like girls. I ain't know. So I just, you know, popped out and it happened she was like you don't got to be scared to tell me anything so that's how that went she didn't judge me or treat me different or nothing like i said i i look at things a little different from uh everybody else Uh, i have to come in on my little opinion on that um you're young i'm not the guy that i was when i was your age i don't know what you're gonna be but i know god got a plan for your life so I don't look at it like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I people get it. go through phases, man. Or either that may be you or whatever you are. You just at this age, when you was her age, versus who you are now, 
Well, it's two different people. I, I don't know how she is, but I know you when you was younger. Oh and <laughs> now I know that you're not the son. You know what I mean? So it's just I always give people a opportunity of changing into whatever and blossoming into whatever they're going to be, mm-hmm. whether it be whatever later on in life. And I and that go for guys, girls, anybody. Right. I just don't play with it because so many people try to put people in boxes and judge them in the place that they had and don't give them a chance to develop. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. You is read that, about is that. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. For sure. So, that's why I feel about it. I didn't feel like that when I was young. I'd have told you, you ain't this or you ain't that. And I was dumb. <laughs> but as you get older, you learn and you, you get more wiser. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I never, so I, I agree with your mom for loving you as who, for who you are, no matter what, because you don't know even how long in life you have. Mm-hmm. So That's I don't so play true. with it. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. But back to you, uh, <laughs> Miss Jamaica. I pass it back off. <laughs> so um, how do you see that you can improve your craft? Probably I really got to... Focus on keeping my dedication where it's supposed to be. Because I'm the type of person that, like, if I'm going through it in life or something, I'll let that take away from what I'm supposed to be doing like exactly. on social media and stuff. I'll be messing with my own money. Mm-hmm. And it's like, for a personal reason, I just got to learn how to not let that affect me so much. Yeah. Because it's definitely something I struggle with. <laughs> and I always tell people, a lot of times... How you help yourself is by helping others. And there's so many people out there who go through that same thing. So when you be real with the people watching you and even like, you know, to sit down and have a real conversation Mm -hmm. through your social media. Right. You'd be surprised how many people come in your comment and be like, man, that's me too. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. by hearing it, it also helps push you. Exactly. So if you're looking for motivation, you find it through your fans a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I go on live and just talk to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They what's, don't know I'm going through something, but I'm, you know, just talk. Before we get out of here, what's your, uh, what's your uh, YouTube channel? So our YouTube is it's with my girlfriend is Gigi and KC, Gigi A N D K C. That's it. And what's your uh, Instagram? How can people link with you on Instagram? Yeah, y'all can follow me at Gigi Dance X O X. Just Gigi Dance X O X. How many fo- <laughs> How many How many followers you got on that thing? Around three hundred k. I'm about to hit four hundred though. Hopefully, okay. by the end of January. What about on TikTok? How you doing over there? Oh, I'm doing great on TikTok. I got about 750K right now. So y'all can follow me at the same thing, GD Dance XOX on TikTok. Man, this is the spotlight. <laughs> Say that again? 376 on Oh, I'm at 376. Hello. <laughs> hey, man. So, I mean, uh, we definitely going to call this the spotlight. Because <laughs> this is this is uh, Gigi Chanel's uh, first uh Official interview. Official yes. interview, man. Shout out to her and C4S for setting this up, man. Those guys always bring us some dope talent over here. For sure that, every time. Wow. Hey, man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. Where the bosses talk. And don't forget to like and subscribe. There she go again, period. <laughs> check it, man. It's your boy, yeah. CEO, man, signing off.